Welcome to Meet the Candidate 2022, recording here at Dry Fly Distillery. Uh, my guest for this session is Deb Conklin, who is running for Spokane County Prosecutor. And I actually, we've met before and we have worked <laughs> together at Vacation we Bible School. We have. We've done Vacation Bible School together. <laughs> so we first met. 20 years ago? Yeah, it's been a while <laughs> since you were state you were uh, assigned out to the to to the church out well. in Lincoln County. Yeah. Well, so I you can tell not just me but uh, viewers a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up and start school? So, I grew up farming in New York State. Um, people don't realize New York is actually heavily rural. Once yes, you get yes. once City. you get out of you know New York City, there's a, it, it is gorgeous. It has the fall colors that New England has. We actually had a, a, a maple tree, a maple, um, maple syrup, maple syrup business. And um, every spring we lived at the maple sap house for four weeks. Um, our first picnic every year <laughs> was making maple syrup. Yeah, so so I grew up on a farm, farming, and um, and learned how to work hard, learned responsibility, learned how to take care of life, living things, plants, animals, all of it. We just kind of had a, um, a small everything farm. We didn't specialize in anything. Um, and then at one point we moved from our smaller place to a bigger farm near Windsor, New York, where we had a seven unit motel in the yard. And mm. so we had summer guests who would come up from the city Scranton in New York and play at being farmers. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was always really fun. And then I went off to university, University of Pennsylvania. So I went from very small town and farm to very big city. Mm. So there's a bit of culture shock there. And I don't know if you know this, but I started out studying architecture. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> I did, yes. So I studied architecture for two years and, and um, Penn did away with their undergraduate architecture degree after mm. I'd spent two years working on it. And back then they could just do that. So I quit school and worked doing drafting for a while and then ended up going west, which had always been my dream and ended up at Montana State University and eventually ended up switching to law and got my law degree from the University of Washington and uh, practiced law for a while, did some clerking for a bit and then worked in the Spokane, or the, I'm sorry, the Clallam County Prosecutor's Office. And then at, 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 there came a point um, where I was frustrated with the legal system and decided I wanted to do something different and was like sitting in my office thinking, so, Two things I'm really good at are sitting down with victims and um, being nurturing with them and helping them get out their story and doing that without increasing their trauma. Mm -hmm. and, and I turned out to be very good at that. In fact, um, I never had, I did the sexual assault cases in the office. I never had to tell a rape victim we were not gonna charge a case because of her credibility issues. I always helped every um, woman, it was all women then, um, I helped every woman make that decision for herself. I helped mm -hmm. her look at the case and the evidence and, and helped her make that decision and sort of empowered her mm -hmm. to do that. The other thing that I really enjoyed about my job was standing up in front of a jury and sort of telling the story in a way that they could see it and they could you know, get drawn into it and then telling them what's the right thing to do based on um, that evidence. And I'm sitting here going, pastors do that. <laughs> I thought, I could be a pastor. And then something in me said, no, I am so not pastor material. And then, you know, you know, what, what they say in seminary is, you don't decide to be a pastor, God decides. And I have to tell you, God decided, because I tried to do other things. I tried to go into <laughs> teaching. And God just finally decided, I am so sorry about that. That's OK. Um, God just finally decided I was going to be a, a pastor. So I do some of the very same things. I sit down with people in crisis. I pastor them through it. And I stand up in front of a congregation every Sunday and tell them the story in a way that draws them in and, and help them figure out what's the right thing to do. So 
That ties that together nicely. <laughs> yeah, so um, I have served churches in places as small as Rosalia, and then out in Davenport and then Wild, and I've served Spokane City Church, where I am now, Liberty Park and Deer Park in South Perry. I also served a church up in Deer Park for a while. So uh, the question, the obvious question is that you start out as a prosecutor in the prosecutor's office, mm -hmm. in the county prosecutor's office, and then you went to pastoring, which you've done for a while. And now why, why switch? What has inspired you to make that switch? The office in which, in where I learned how to be a prosecuting attorney had, um, I learned a certain ethos around what we do and how we do it. And the Spokane County Prosecutor's Office has some ways of approaching things that, that I find problematic. And so I think we need a culture change in the office. And so I believe that my practice experience and my training would make me a strong person to come into the office and, and change that culture and to help it become an office that um, really looks at how we achieve justice rather than how we punish people. So, you know, the whole um, ethos that says when someone misbehaves, you punish them. Mm -hmm. is one that, that in the 50s, it was, you know, it was in our parenting, it was in our law, it was everywhere. And since then, at least in parenting, we have learned that a carrot actually works better than a stick. <laughs> and, um, and I think there are things we can do to help our community be safer by adopting practices that have been proven to reduce repeat offenders. Mm -hmm. and to help us make our streets safer, make our homes safer. And so for me, this is still ministry, just a different way to do it. Okay, so that's actually a good way to uh, segue to that one minute answer to the question. <laughs> why am I running? Why should people vote oh, for, why should... why should people vote for Deb Conklin for Spokane County Prosecutor? Because well, there are a lot of reasons, but one of the most important is because um, what we're doing now is costing the taxpayers money and it's making us less safe. And we need someone in the office who's actually going to embrace supervised release and not lose the $400,000 grant from the MacArthur Fund and let us spend that money creating programs that then let us save money on the jail because, in fact, depending on the day and whose numbers you use, something around 70% of people sitting in jail on any given day have not been convicted. Mm. They're not there because they've been convicted of a crime. They're there pre-trial. And so if we use some of the proven practices, we can save that money and put it into things like I was talking to the firefighters this morning and, and one of their concerns is what happens when they stop um, or when they try to help somebody on the street and it's someone who's high on meth and pulls a knife on them. Mm -hmm. And we can help solve that problem. We can help make it safer for mm -hmm. our EMTs to go out on calls. And so I believe if we change the culture of the office, Spokane will be safer and the system will cost us less. All right, well wrapped up. Uh, the prosecuting attorney candidates all have good summaries. Thank you for joining me today, <laughs> Deb. Deb Conklin for uh, Spokane County Prosecutor. From Chud Sr. to Dick Wendell, to Kristen and myself. And now to our kids. Our goal is to help people drive for generations. From roll up windows to power everything. From stick to automatic. From gas 
to electric. No one can totally predict what technology is coming our way. But I can guarantee we will be here before and after the sale, giving you the confidence for generations to come. That's the Wendell Way. Drive for generations. Hey voters, join me, Kirk Cameron, on Saturday, September 24th with We Believe, We Vote at the Spokane Convention Center for a night of celebrating biblical citizenship. Join We Believe, We Vote for our annual fundraiser on Saturday, September 24th, 2022 with Kirk Cameron. For tickets and event information, please visit webelievewevote.com. That's webelievewevote.com. We'll see you there. Weather in the inland northwest can wear you down. And if your gutters are in poor condition or you do not have gutters, you could suffer damage that could cost a fortune to fix. Rain Man Seamless Rain Gutters has almost 30 years of professional experience in serving the inland northwest region and strives to ensure customer service that is second to none from the time you call to the end of the project.